Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrek Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be talking about the specifications of the Polaris 10 and Polaris 11 GPUs from AMD. This information will pertain to shaders, memory, clock speeds, um, TDP, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Now, obviously these are rumours, but this information is looking pretty darn solid, and you'll find out why as we're going through this video. This is also an article, if you want to check it out, it would be linked in the video description. With that said, let's start, shall we? So we're going to be starting things out with the bigger brother of the two, that would be Polaris 10. Rather counterintuitively, as many of you know, Polaris 11 is the lower end of the two GPUs, and with Polaris 10 being the higher end of the family. Now... It's already been well established, of course, at some rumours, for example, the fact it's a 14nm FinFET process, it has dramatically improved performance per watt, but what about the new information, what about the stuff that we actually care about, such as clock speed, shaders, that type of jazz as well? Polaris 10, also known as Elismere, I'll spell that out for you, that's e -double -L -E -S -M -E -R -E, range of cards, um, currently there has been one that's leaked, and we have some images of it. So, it's labelled 67DF colon C4. Now, this particular card has a core clock of 1050MHz with memory running at 1250. Obviously, however, you have to times that by 4 by memory. We'll go more into that in just a second, however. And it has 2304 stream processors slash cores. This is spread across 36 compute units. But, as you're probably aware, most... GPUs now have what is known as speed binning. Essentially, in this instance, four compute units have been disabled, meaning the total number, if you're going with maximum configuration, is 2560, so 2560, which would, of course, mean that 40 compute units are enabled. Now, the 67, excuse me, DF colon C4 is using a 256-bit memory controller, and we are, at least according to these leaks, seeing a memory configuration of either 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 or GDDR5X. Obviously, 5X has considerably higher memory bandwidth, up to twice the performance per pin, which is obviously pretty damn shiny. Now, I did mention that the clock speed is up to 1050, however, from what we understand from the engineering samples, they are ranging from 800 to 1050 megahertz, but the whispers are that it can actually go up to 1000 and, uh, sorry, 1.15 gigahertz for the retail silicon. So AMD essentially haven't gotten all of the way there yet, they're still cranking up the clocks. The TDP, however, is really weird because it's only 110 to 135 watts of energy, which is monstrously low, to say the least. And, as I mentioned, in terms of memory configuration, the memory at the moment is running at 5,000 megahertz, but sometimes it does go up to 6,000. But, supposedly, the retail silicon is going to go even higher. The whole purpose behind this, of course, is that they want to ensure that memory bandwidth is not a problem, particularly when you compare it to the Hawaii GPUs, which were using a 512-bit memory bus. Remember that you can't really compare apples to apples when it comes to memory bandwidth. This is for a couple of different reasons. For one, as I mentioned, if you're talking about GDDR5X, well, you've got that additional performance because 5X is a lot more efficient and it basically uh, sends more data vastly simplified because we've talked about it a lot of times before so there's no point going over the same ground but the real thing is uh, data compression now do remember that hawaii uh, was improved by tonga where tonga improved things such as this compression or better lossless compression and other bits and pieces which basically meant that the gpu could send more data using the same amount of bandwidth and then we are seeing a further improvement with Polaris. We don't know how much of an improvement there is. With um, Hawaii to Tonga, there was about a 40% improvement from what I was told. So we don't know how much of a difference there's going to be from um, Tonga to Polaris. I don't want to pull a figure out of my butt because that would just be, you know, me just making it up. But even if you say a conservative figure of like 10%, 20%, that's still pretty impressive. I guess I just did pull a figure out my butt. But anyway... Now, do remember that we've already had some detail with Polaris 11. I'll run over those in just a moment, but we have got some fresh details. Essentially, Baffin 
which is going to be the lower end of the SKU. So we're looking at uh, Polaris 11. It's going to be priced and very competitive to the R7 range, for example, the R7 370. And supposedly the TDP of the card is just, it's bonkers, it's crazy. 50 watts. Now, I do remember there have been various reports that the Polaris 11 was running VR video content passively. That isn't to say that it had no heatsink. I just want to emphasize that it just means that the fan was not spinning. But that's still a pretty darn impressive achievement. Now, we do remember that Polaris 11, and this was reported just a few days ago, the Polaris 11, codename 67FF, which was the device name is actually known as Goose, features 16 compute units. So, once again, assuming the same maps, which we've already pretty much verified with this latest leak are in place, means you've got 1,024 unified cores for that particular SKU, which is pretty impressive to say the least and it should mean that there's a relatively decent level of performance obviously it is possible however that some of the skus actually go a little bit more and in fact from what we've heard it's possible that you could be seeing around the 1200 mark with the higher end uh, polaris 11s now i do want to finally touch upon just a few small details so we do know that there are two main events which we could see a uh, reveal from AMD. The first is Computex and the second is E3. Both are actually taking place very close to one another. You've got Computex which begins on the 31st of May and ends on June the uh, June the 4th, excuse me, I was about to say June the 3rd. And then you've got E3 2016, which takes place in June 14th, but then finishes on June the 17th. So there's two possible dates, but neither one is exactly a stone's throw away. For those of you who are wondering about Vega 10, well, it's the ultra high end card, and that's not going to debut until probably Q1. It features 4096 shaders, 16 gigabytes of HBM2 memory, and is absolutely monstrous in terms of size. Now, I do want to finally go over one, I guess, last point, and that would be shader numbers. So, I've heard a couple of people message me actually over the last couple of days and asking me, well, yeah, if you look at the number of shaders, there's not really a big difference between, for example, Hawaii, or um, even if you were to take a look at the 4096 in Vega compared to, let's say, the Fury X, what, what's going on? Well, remember, it's not just about the number of shaders. This is actually an argument that could be levied on, um, in fact, I believe someone actually mentioned it regarding Pascal as well. I believe one person was ironically mentioning AMD, another person in video. But you can't really just say shader for shader. Now, this is a really crappy example, but it's the one I'm just thinking off at the top of my head. It's a bit like me clocking a Pentium 4 um, to, let's say, 4 gigahertz and saying, well, that outperforms a Skylake at 4 gigahertz, right? It should be the same. No, of course not. Now, obviously, that's a really drastically different situation because you've got a lot of extra cores in the, the case of the... Um, in the case of the Skylake processor, I handled more thread. But even if you were to, let's say, go into BIOS, disable the other processors, so you've only got one processor core with hyper-threading enabled, and then still do the same tests, of course, in this case, Skylake is going to ruffle stomp on the Pentium 4 because it's got a lot better IPC. There's multiple reasons behind that. More efficient caching, better at handling certain threads, better predictions, and so on and so on and so on. And it's very similar to Polaris and Pascal. So we don't know all of what uh, NVIDIA and AMD have done because obviously that would mean that I've got access to their internal memos and I don't. I've got access to certain stuff, obviously, because, well, some of it's leaked and some of it they've released themselves. And we do know, of course, both companies are working on efficiencies. So obviously, 28 to 14 nm you've got things such as lower power consumption they're able to squeeze more um i guess you could say logic more transistors into the same space but there has also been improvements for example talking about pascal for example they've managed to refine the their um there are SMs a little bit. They've reduced the number of cores inside to just 64. So those 64 ha have access to large amounts of cache. 
and theoretically they're improving the thread scheduling across the processor as well which is something AMD are doing remember let's say and this is obviously an example let's say you've got 2,000 shaders right but 30% of the time oh let's say actually let's just make it really simple let's just say that 30% of those shaders aren't always being fully utilized so let's say the GPU load averages 30 um, 70% well that means you're basically wasting performance and what happens of course with GPUs is it doesn't really act like that you've got basically thousands of shaders in your graphics card and each of those are being tasked to do something so which means you've basically got bubbles in the pipeline and those bubbles are basically workloads where the GPU is being told draw this, render that, compute this, what have you. So the more efficient you are, the better you are at preemption, the better you are at basically throwing out useless data. For example, let's say that you're uh, rudimentary starting to draw the scene well wouldn't it be better to throw out let's say the fact that you're drawing a car that's behind a wall and 50% of that car is behind the wall so let's say the rear half is behind a wall well isn't it better to not draw that 50% that's behind the wall before the rest of the scene is fully rendered so for example you don't want to start calculating lighting which is quite expensive or calculating anti-aliasing or starting to draw textures and all of that stuff in other words it's all about efficiencies and we've, start, we've started to see improvements in efficiencies for a long time um, but this is just the latest iteration of that so by all means you can't compare a spade a spade so let's say for the sake of argument you can't say that the GTX 1080 has an only slight bump in number of shaders compared to the 980 or you can't say that the say the 390 has a certain amount of shaders versus a certain amount of shaders on the Polaris uh, 490 all you can say is that a like for like comparison and then go with the performance differential so for example let's say that you're looking at a card which is directly replacing another card so let's say once again it's the 4 490 is directly replacing the 390 and then you say well that's only a five percent improvement in performance well then that's not very good really is it on the other hand if it's higher than that then you can go like for like hopefully that made some sense i didn't really plan that out and normally i've got some notes and stuff with me before i start recording stuff um, but I didn't really plan that. I just kind of want to answer it because I've had a couple of people uh, DM me on Twitter and I've also had a couple of folks actually messaging me or popping up on Facebook on um, on Red Gaming Tech Facebook, which is uh, facebook.com slash Red Gaming Tech. By the way, my own personal Twitter is also linked in the video description, but you can also just type it in yourself as RGT Crimson Rain. That would be R-A-Y-N-E because I'm cool or something. Anyway, I uh, hope that that's answered anyone's questions. I'm going to get going now. Um, yeah, so hopefully you've enjoyed the video. As I said, vi uh, there is an article in the video description if you still want any written examples of what I've talked about or more links and all of that stuff. But for now, I'm going to get going. So take care of yourselves. Bye for now.